it's 2024, which means it's the right time to start learning how to program in Java. And if you want to learn how to program in Java, the best way to do it is to have a powerful integrated development environment by your side, an IDE. And for my money, the very best IDE for Java on the market is Eclipse, which is why in this very quick tutorial, I want to show you how to install Eclipse on Windows and write your very first Java application just to prove that Eclipse is installed on Windows properly. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials over there on Java, Eclipse, DevOps, Spring Boot, Scrum, Agile, you name it. But right now, I just want to take you on a quick journey of how to install the Eclipse IDE on Windows and get your first Java program up and running. So how do you start? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is just go to Google and type in Download Eclipse. The first link should took you, take you to the Eclipse website. Now, if you're worried about getting and fished. Well, you can always just type in eclipse.org slash downloads. Won't take you too long to type that in. And that will take you to the Eclipse downloads page where you're going to want to download the Eclipse IDE. Now, there's a basic Java version, but on the page where it says, hey, you know, click here to download the Eclipse IDE, there's an option to download some other packages. And there's something called the Eclipse IDE for enterprise developers, which has all sorts of bonus tools and features that you just don't want to miss out on. And I highly recommend downloading that one instead of just the basic Java one. It's all going to look very, very similar. As I like to say, it's exactly the same. It's just a little bit different. Now, there's a link there to download the binary for x86 64 distributions of Windows. I'm going to click that. You can see over my system information, I am on an x64 based PC. If that doesn't download right away, you can always click that zip file again to get it to download. Just give it a little kick and eventually that download will download. <laughs> it's a big download. I've downloaded it previously. It's, uh, wow, 525 megs in size. That's sizable. But after it's download, you'll just want to unzip it. Just right click on that file. I've got WinZip installed so I can select extract here. You can use any Windows based zip unzip compression utility that you want. And when you do that, you'll end up with a folder called Eclipse, and that is essentially the uh, contains your Eclipse installation, everything unzipped. Now, you don't want to leave it there in that downloads folder. So, after you unzip the Eclipse ID into that downloads folder, move it somewhere more sensible. I always keep a folder called underscore tools on my operating system where I put all of my tools. Um, so I would say copy and paste it in there. Maybe under program files, some people like that. Just make sure it's a folder that you've got read and write access to. Execute access as well probably help. That'll be most folders on a Windows operating system. So don't worry too much. Now, one question I often get is, do you have to install Java before installing the Eclipse IDE? And in fact, you don't have to. The Eclipse IDE comes pretty packaged with the JDK, the Java Development Kit, Java Development Toolkit. That's what JDK stands for. So you don't actually have to install Java to work with Eclipse. Now, if you want to install a more modern version of Java or maybe an older version of Java, you might want to install that and then tell Eclipse about it. But to get started with Eclipse, don't worry about installing Java. Just download Eclipse and get Eclipse installed. Now, it looks like this is almost ready to go. With that folder copied, I'm going to open that folder up. I'm going to look at that eclipse.exe file, and I am going to double click on that file with extreme passion and vengeance. And quickly, that Eclipse ID NAG screen will come up. Notice 2023-12, so this is 2024, this is a, a very recent edition. When this comes up, the first thing it's going to ask me is, 
Where do you want to store all of the files for the project you're about to create? That's referred to as the workspace. I think it defaults to like your home directory on Windows, you know, users, Cameron, Eclipse workspace. Again, I've got a, a folder on my operating system that's called underscore code, and I'm gonna tell Eclipse to use that folder instead. But again, just figure out a, a nice folder that you've got read, write, and execute access to, and select that as your Eclipse workspace. And so here we go. Where do you want your workspace? Users owner Eclipse workspace. That's fine. Select that. That's fine if you select that there. I always like to change that and put that into like a folder called underscore code or something like that. So I'll click launch. And as that launches, you see that folder Eclipse workspace being created in that underscore code folder. You can put your workspace anywhere you want. As I said, if you just want to leave it in your home directory, that's cool too. I just like to have everything all in that code directory that I create. Inside that folder, you'll also notice that there's a dot metadata folder. It might be hidden, so it might not be visible in your workspace if you haven't selected to open and make visible hidden files, but you can always go in there. You don't have to touch any of the files in there. That's sort of Eclipse specific metadata, but you know, some configuration of your workspace is placed in there. Now Eclipse is up, I get the NAG screen, it says, welcome, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna create a new web project, pull something from Git, import an existing project? You know, what I wanna do is I actually just wanna create a brand new Java project. So I'm gonna close this window and boy, I get a, a list of options from the left-hand side as well. It really wants me to create a Maven project or a Java EE project. I just want a simple Java project. So to do that, all I have to do is say file, new. Boy, it really wants me to create a Maven project, doesn't it? Um, the option to create just a basic Java project isn't here, so I gotta click other. I'll click other, and there we go. Right there, it says, do you wanna create just a humble Java project? That's all I wanna do. Just wanna create a simple Hello World page. So I'm gonna click next. After I click next, it's gonna say, what's the name of the project? And I'll call it My First Eclipse Project. That sounds good. It asks, what version of Java do I wanna use? You'll notice it's got a bunch of different options ranging from, we go back to JRE 1.1, we go forward to Java 21. Java SE 17 is the long-term support release that the majority of people are on right now, although Java 21 is the latest long-term support release. But let's not jump the gun. Let's stick with Java SE 17. That looks good. I'm not going to create a module info class. I don't need to get into Java modules right now. All of that looks good to me. You can click next, but the next screen is just decoration telling you where it's gonna create your source folder and where it's gonna put compiled files. I can just click finish and I'm ready to go. Now, the whole Eclipse IDE has a whole bunch of, of different layouts for you. Some layouts for database work, some layouts for Git work, some layouts for web development, some layouts for database driven development. It's also got a layout for just doing Java work. The layouts are referred to as perspectives. It says, do you wanna open the Java perspective because you're creating a Java project? And I'm like, you don't have to ask me twice. Yeah, open that Java perspective and let's start writing some Java code. So over on the right-hand side there, it's got this SRC folder. Heard some people call it SRC. I've heard some people call it source. I've heard some people call it SRC. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna call it so that I can create some files in there. I'm gonna right click on it and say, I'm gonna create a brand new Java class. So I'll create this class. It'll say, is there a package? A package is like a folder structure. It's a way to organize your code. Um, it usually maps to your domain name. So I've got the domain name com.mcnz. So I'll put in the package com.mcnz. The class will be named hello world, uppercase H, uppercase W. Java is case sensitive. It gets very sensitive when you insult its case. So make sure you've done that properly. You also got to spell things correctly as well. So hello world does have an O in it. So I'm going to add that in. Now, by the way, one of the other options here is to add in a public static void main method. That's the entry point to a standalone application. So if you want to have a runnable application, you have to have that method 
method somewhere. It's a lot to type out and it's easy to mess up. So it's a lot easier to click that checkbox than to type out all of the letters in that method. So select that, click finish, your code will appear. Now one of the things I like to do whenever I go in here is I like to go into Windows Preferences and just see if I can change my editor fonts. I always forget um, how to go in here and do this. And there we go, text font. I'm just gonna boost that up to 18 a little bit and bold, click apply, and there we go. It looks a little bit more handsome right now. And what do you wanna do? I'm just gonna go in here and say system.out.println and say hello Java world from Eclipse. Throw a semicolon at the end of that line of code. Click Control S or File Save. Make sure the file is saved. Then after you've done that, you can just run the code. One way to do it is just right click on the file and say Run As, a Java application. I think there's even this button up here. You can select Run As a Java application, but run it as a Java application and boom, there we go at the bottom. Hello Java world from Eclipse, which proves out the fact that yes, indeed, we did get Eclipse installed on Windows and we even created a very, very simple Java program in Eclipse. So there you go, if you got that far, pat yourself on the back because you are ready to start learning Java in 2024. Now, I've got a lot of other tutorials that build on this. You know, when you start doing development, you realize that programming is really just about declaring variables, doing conditional statements, putting everything inside of loops, and then maybe structuring data in objects or doing something functional like that. But, you know, the, the foundations, if you take the time and you're patient, you know, they're fun to learn. I've got a number of other tutorials in this series that pick up from here and show you how to learn and program in Java. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification button. Also, I've got a, a newsletter that talks about all the latest things that are going in the world of software development, whether it's the new things they're doing with the Mojo programming language or different strategies to get the most out of Agile and Scrum. So sign up for that. And of course, I am the editor over at theserverside.com. So head over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Java, Spring, Jakarta, Eclipse, you name it. Oh, and if you're interested in my personal antics, hey, you can always follow me on Twitter. And definitely subscribe on the YouTube.